Welcome everybody. Glad to have you with our weekly Bible study. Today we're turning to one of the most wonderful passages in all the Bible. If I were to ask you of the 150 Psalms, which one is your favorite? I suspect that a lot of you would say, if not all, the 23rd Psalm. Now, I, I want to say a word of caution. Some of us have read it so many times, we may overlook some of the innuendos and truths because we've plowed that field. But invariably, I study scripture, and you do too, and ideas jump out of the Bible that were there all along, and up until then, we missed them. And I think to myself, you dummy, why, why didn't you see that before now? Well, at any rate, We'll begin with the marvelous six verses of the 23rd Psalm, a psalm for the living as well as a psalm for the dying. The first verse says, as you know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. There are several big words in these, this short verse. Number one, the Lord. We believe that our lives ought to be theocentric, God-centered. He is number one. The second thing, he is our shepherd. He cares about us. And the third thing is, he's our personal shepherd, my shepherd. You know, I grew up during the Depression and then World War II with all the rationing. And I remember when my wife and I, in 1964, went up to New York to the World's Fair. We actually went to the convention of the Baptists. All the Baptists throughout the nation were meeting in Atlantic City. And so we went on to the World's Fair and took our oldest boy. And I remember we walked in and we sat down there in New York. And I turned to Vita and I said, honey, I can't believe you and I are here. You and I grew up very modestly. We are in a blue cottard background. We were not one of the haves, we were the have nots. And we're actually at the World's Fair. It's a wonderful thing to know that the Lord is our shepherd. He's your shepherd, my shepherd, personal. And the second verse we find, he's our provider. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Now you'll have to understand, Palestine didn't get but about 20 inches of rain a year. Consequently, row crops in farming wouldn't do. Wasn't enough rain. So shepherding and sheep herding was the way in which the people survived. And sheep can't fend very well for themselves. There's not a lot of grass in Palestine. And the shepherd would go and provide, knowing where the grass was and where the smooth water was. And water doesn't come easy in the Near East. And not only that, sheep cannot drink from water which flows. It has to be still water. And God provides for you and me as the ancient shepherd provided for his sheep. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He is our leader then. He is our leader now. And when we need to know how we ought to live and how we ought to conduct ourselves, he is our guide. Now the third verse talks about this very thing. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. It's a wonderful thing to know that you and I have a guide for about a thousand years after David, there came along the good shepherd. And you remember the good shepherd says, I am the light of the world. He or she who walks after me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. God leads his people, and he leads each of us as we will follow. And you remember what Jesus said? He said, follow me. He is our template. He is our paragon. He is the one that we seek to build our lives and follow.
as such. Powerful truth. Now we come to the fourth verse. And what do we find here? He's our protector. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You know, life is not all on the mountaintop. There's cancer, there's accidents, there's heart attacks, there's pandemics, there's difficult times, there's people out of work, there are family tensions. And the wonderful thing about all this is the fact that God is with us through it all. The key word along this line when it says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow, is the word through. All of us have our ups and downs and all of us have our challenges. Never dreamed that my wife and I and our family would lose our oldest son. As a pastor, I conducted literally hundreds of memorial services for other people who lost their loved ones. But the day came when we were on the second row. But God led us through it all. And the beautiful thing about our valleys as Christians, they have an entrance and they have an exit. We don't live down there the rest of our lives. Now, you'll notice the observations here. It says, your, my, your rod and your staff. A rod was carried for protection. A staff was carried for support. And if you have, if you've ever gone hiking and you get a, a pole and when you keeps you steady and God is there to keep us steady through it all. And that's a wonderful promise. Then we come to the fifth verse. And you might notice an innuendo here you might miss. It says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. God is not only our guide, our protector, our provider. He's also our host. We dwell in his house. We live by his wonderful sustenance. God is really the only spiritual necessity that you and I have to have to make it in this world and in the next. And it's a wonderful thing that he's our host. And not only that, he is the one who anoints us and keeps us fresh. Well, we come to the last verse, just six verses in this marvelous psalm. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Which means God provides a home at the end of life's day. What a promise. You remember how Jesus and John said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never, ever die. You know, time is a small bridge between two vast eternities. God was before creation. God will be after our world comes to a halt. And it's a wonderful thing to know. There are three big ideas in this passage. The first one's this. God is the only necessity needed in life. Second one's this. We do not need to worry about life or by death. You know, Jesus said, do not be overwhelmed. I have overcome the world. The Apostle Paul said it beautifully in Romans. We are more than conquerors. How? Through him who loved us. And that's a wonderful promise. And the third idea, because those first two truths are true, because we belong to the family of God. You remember how Jesus said, or John wrote about Jesus in John 1, 14, He came and we beheld his glory like unto the glory of the Father, full of grace and truth. And as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become children of God. So 
No longer do we have to worry about the present order, ultimately, and we don't have to worry about the world to come. I like what the poet said. I know not what the future hath of wonder and surprise. And so beside the silent sea I await the muffled oar. No harm from him can come to me on ocean or on shore. I know not where his islands lift their fronded palms in air. I only know I cannot drift beyond his loving care. He is our provider. He is our guide. He's our protector. And he is the host as we spend eternity with him. Jesus said, don't be upset. Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me and my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. That's how we can hang our hat on this present order and in the order yet to come. Hey, hope you have a wonderful day. And remember, don't use, lose your sense of humor. You remember the first high jumper in the Bible? It was Naaman. Remember, name and the leaper. Hey, have a great day. We'll see you.